Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast, where we explore the mindset, skill set, and habit set of leadership communication. Using these tips, techniques, and tactics, you'll be able to talk like a leader to build better relationships and get more done. Your host is Guy Harris, who has more than 20 years of combined professional and military experience in consulting, coaching, and training in areas like team and interaction dynamics, communication strategies and tactics, as well as emotional intelligence. Take it away, Guy. Hi, this is Guy Harris. Welcome to Talk Like a Leader. This week's episode is titled, Two Sides of the Need to be Heard and Understood. A number of years ago, Patrick Lencioni released a book called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team that I think I've quoted before or even probably referenced this line. He said that reasonable, rational people don't have a need to get their way so much as they have a need to be heard and understood. And that line fits perfectly with my experience in working with people. I find that most reasonable, rational people, which, by the way, is most people, don't really want so much to get what they want as to have you understand what they want. Now, clearly, people want to get their way. That's kind of human nature. It's true for me. It's true for my wife. It's true for my kids. It's true for many of my coworkers. And most of us are mature enough that when we're in a collaborative, interdependent, working sort of relationship with another person, we realize that we're not always going to get exactly what we want, and we're going to have to find ways to work together, even when we maybe disagree on some things. What we do really want, what most of us want, is to be heard and understood. So let's start with that premise, that the key idea is to be heard and understood. And then I'm going to also reference a book called First Break All the Rules, which is about a 20-year-old book or so right now, where the study authors found that a big predictor of leadership success was level of emotional control, emotional intelligence, knowing how to manage and control one's own emotions. And I think these two things go together very well in terms of understanding how to be a more effective leadership communicator, how to communicate more effectively in a leadership role. Now, the points about reasonable, rational people don't having a need to be heard and to get their way so much as to be heard and understood is something that I've talked about in previous episodes, the idea of meeting other people's needs, understanding people's needs, adjusting your communication to fit their needs, trying to listen to their perspective, to identify their needs, and all those sorts of things. I've talked about a number of times in a number of different ways. And that's not really the point of this episode. I'll point to that idea and say, let's not forget that idea. The real point of this episode is to look at the other side of the need to be heard and understood. It's our need as leaders to be heard and understood. And to realize that our need to be heard and understood can be driving us a great deal in our engagement with other people. So a common challenge here is that your need to be heard and understood, and I'll say my need to be heard and understood, can cause some problems for us because it can interfere with our listening. It can cause us to focus more on venting our frustration and lose perspective on the real goal of a leadership communication. Now, so many leadership communications come up in what could be emotionally charged situations. I'll point to two very specific ones as an example. For example, in a coaching situation where you're trying to help someone improve performance or correct performance, or it takes a number of different forms, or in a conflict situation where there is a strong disagreement with another person. Now, in a coaching conversation, the goal is really to discover and address potential barriers to achievement, to figure out how to achieve a certain goal, how to get a certain result, or how to improve a certain behavior. A quick little reference point is I don't believe that coaching is only applied when things are going poorly. I think I've said this phrase before, getting better does not imply we are currently bad, because better is a modifier of good, it is not a modifier of bad. So coaching does not imply that anything's wrong, although it could be something wrong. Coaching is almost any performance that isn't designed to help us improve what we're doing. And so to do that, we want to discover and address any potential barriers to improvement or achievement. We want to identify and leverage any strengths the person brings to the table for achieving the desired result. Possibly there's some time to share perspectives or experience that can help the person. That 
can certainly be a piece of it, although it's probably not the primary piece of coaching. What it's not is a the time to let people know how frustrated you are with the situation. And the desire to be heard and understood has the potential to turn a coaching conversation into a venting conversation where we vent our frustration on the person rather than coach them to improve performance. The conversation can quickly turn into letting them know how frustrated we are or how stressed we are with the current situation, rather than in discussing with them how to improve the current situation. Likewise, in a conflict conversation, that the goal is to resolve the difference we have with other people. The goal is to find a mutually agreeable path forward, to find ways that we can continue to work together and resolve the potential challenge we're facing. The goal of a conflict conversation is not to punish the other person and make them feel bad, or make sure they know how irritated, hurt, angry, or frustrated we are. See, if it turns into making sure they know how irritated, hurt, angry, and frustrated we are, we are again venting our frustration on the person because we have a need to be heard and understood, rather than keeping our focus on the real point of the conversation, which is to resolve the difference and find a mutually agreeable path forward. Now, I'm not suggesting that helping other people see where things went wrong or helping people understand how the impact of their behaviors might affect us is a bad thing. It's just a reminder that that's not the point of a coaching or a conflict conversation. That we can't let our desire to be heard and understood drive the conversation. Are we people? Do we have a need to be heard and understood? Absolutely. Is there a time and place for that? Absolutely. I'm just encouraging you, and honestly, by recording this message, reminding myself that when we get in difficult conversations with people, when we're coaching about performance challenges, when we're trying to resolve conflicts, when we're trying to solve problems together in a collaborative way, we have to keep our desire to be heard and understood in check so that we can keep our focus on the real point of the conversation. We can't let our emotional gratification become the point or the objective of the conversation. Yes, we need to make space for that. Yes, we need to figure out a way to make sure we are also okay when this is all said and done. And we can't make that the point of the conversation. We want to keep the organizational goal in mind, the business goal in mind, rather than our personal satisfaction and personal needs. So this week, I want to encourage you to remember the two sides of the need to be heard and understood. It's a reminder that when we're engaging with other people, we need to make space for them to be heard and understood so that we can engage in a process that helps us come to a mutually agreeable plan for whatever we're going to do. Remove barriers, overcome challenges, improve the situation so that they can feel engaged and encouraged and we've done everything we can to invite them into a full buy-in for our plan forward. We also have to be aware of kind of the dark underbelly of it and not allow ourselves to be sucked into a conversation where we make the point of the conversation our personal gratification rather than achieving the organizational goal or supporting the principle for which we're having a conversation. So if we can keep ourselves in check and invite other people in by making sure we listen and understand to them, you and I, we all can talk like a leader. This has been the Talk Like a Leader podcast. You can listen to this show every week wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Guy Harris, and thanks for listening.